So in this part of the orchid, um, we're going to be learning how to make the Cymbidium orchid. Now, Cymbidium orchid is a very popular orchid. And uh, here you can see the Cymbidium orchid flower and also the Cymbidium orchid uh, buds, okay? So I'm going to start off first of all with the column. So this is similar to, um, for example, the uh, Dendrobium orchid in lesson one, and we're gonna make a column. And then once that's dry, we're gonna wrap the throat around it. The difference is these outside petals are wired individually, um, as will be the Vanda and will also be uh, sort of uh, some of the other orchid varieties you might make. But anyway, so each variety is a little bit different. Now, when we make the, um, the uh, Cymbidium orchid, we're going to be using the original mat. So remember this mat, I've uh, in lesson one, I used the Dendrobium, which obviously this is a column. This is the, um, then the throat here. This is the sepals and this is the petals. And then these are the Dendrobium orchid buds, okay? Um, then we moved on to the Oncidium orchid where we use the throat here. And then we use this back part there for the um, the flower. And then we made the actual buds using the ultimate filler flower mold. Okay, now we're gonna move on to use the last components on this mold for the Cymbidium orchid. So this is going to be the column uh, we're going to make for the throat. This will be the throat here, okay? These are the sepals, which are the straight ones. And then one curve to the right and one curve to the left. These are the two petals. And then finally, the two buds at the top here, we're gonna be uh, making these two buds of two sizes for the Cymbidium orchid. All right, the second mat is the one I will be using in lesson four and lesson five for making the Vanda orchid and also the Phalaenopsis or moth orchid. Um, when we make Cymbidium orchids, so again, we have many choices of color. Um, so I'm making this nice uh, fun green one. This is a nice sort of uh, limey green color and it's sort of really nice uh, color combination with this like almost burgundy markings in the throat. But uh, orchids can be made, this same orchid could be made with a cream throat and then it could have the green petals or cream and burgundy or cream and a rust color. So there are lots of sort of what we call bicolored where you have the throat in one color and then the sepals and petals in another. To make this color, um, I've used uh, just a little bit of a lime green uh, gel color, just a little bit of lime green to make this sort of pale green. Similar color to in my filler flowers for like hydrangeas, nicotiana, flowers like that. I use this also for calla lilies in my calla lily video as well. I have one of the calla lilies made with this color. This color I use for quite a lot of different flowers. We're going to start off with a 24 gauge wire. Okay, so 24 gauge wire, we're going to make a hook on this, we're gonna be using a pair of pliers. They want to make about a five millimeter hook on here. Again, quite a closed hook, okay? So it's gonna be about a five millimeter hook on the end of the wire. I'm then going to take my paste here. So we're gonna take a number six size ball of paste. So number six size ball. So this is going to be pre-measured. So number six, so one third below the hole and then two thirds above the top of it, okay? Just going to just add a little tiny bit of vegetable short into this. All right, and I'm going to take the hook wire and I'm just gonna brush some egg white onto the end of the little hook here and insert this into the ball of paste. So I'm gonna insert that into the ball of paste like this, okay? And then I'm going to use just a little bit of corn flour, corn starch, just to mold this down. Let it in the wire move until this is about the length of the actual cavity you can see here. All right, it's going to be about the length of the cavity. I'm going to take a little tiny bit of vegetable shortening, just open up the cavity and just pop this in. Okay. And then what we're going to do is going to take a little bit of corn flour, corn starch on your paste. Just put a little bit of that onto there as well, okay? And then you're gonna almost like push that in at an angle. So I'm going into the mold here. So this is gonna go into the mold. And then what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna actually press the mold from the side there to, because I almost, what I want is I want it a little bit rounded. I don't want it sort of flat on the back. I want like a little bit of a rounded part to it. You can just use your companion tool if you need to, but just sort of make sure that it's, so you see how what I'm doing is I'm just gonna use the mold here and just sort of press this. You see how you have this little part coming out from the, so you just get this little sort of rounded back onto it, okay? So then you're gonna release this from the mold. So you see how you're gonna have this, this hollow part here, all right? 
And then on the hollow part, we're going to use your companion tool. And I'm just going to make a hollow in the top here like this. All right. So I'm just going to bend this over just slightly. All right. The hook is going to come up about three quarters of the way up the top. And then um, what we're going to do is going to then take some yellow paste. So we're going to use a number two small ball of yellow. So very similar to the way I did the dendrobium, but this is obviously a larger, larger version um, of this. So take my yellow paste. So this is number two small size. All right. So it's going to be a number two that goes through the number two hole. All right. So it's going to be basically a small number two. And then Again, we're going to now use this larger cavity. This is the one we use for dendrobium. This is the large one. This little cavity can also be used um, for like little eyes and things. If you were doing like a little molded dragonfly or bumblebee, you could use these for little eyes. So you're actually just going to take your piece of paper, make it into a slight oval shape, and put a little bit of corn starch corn flour onto there. Going to push this into the mold here and again just going to push this in with your that will just fill the mold up level okay and then we're going to flex the mold here this will come out here like so okay now just like i showed on the dendrobium what i'm going to do is i'm going to use just my rounded end of my companion tool and i'm just going to put some egg white on it and the reason is, is because then I'll only get the egg white where I need it to be, which is going to be right in the bottom of the cup. If we use a brush, sometimes you're going to get excessive amounts of egg white. Just give that a wipe. And then I'm going to take my, using my needle tool end, I'm going to take this and this is going to just sort of sit into here. I'm just going to press that into the, so you see they'll almost go in on the side. They will just sort of sit into that little cavity and this will give you the little center of the, you see how that's how they actually will sit, all right? Um, so very similar to the dendrobium, but obviously a, um, a larger scale. And uh, so this is going to be the column, all right? So obviously this is one I have dried already, so you'd need to let that dry. Um, that would need to dry for about two hours or so. And um, this obviously only needs to support the throat, but it has to obviously have the, the throat there. Uh, the column has to be dried so the throat won't get damaged. Now, I'm going to move on now to the uh, throat. So when we do the throat, we're going to be using here a number eight small ball of paste. Okay, so this is going to be done with a number eight small size ball of paste. Okay, so number eight small. That's just going to go through the number eight hole. Now, with the mold, there are actually two options you have here, and it's also similar to the Phalaenopsis orchid. Uh, this mold here, um, as you can see, this has the pollen tract, which are these two lines here, all right, which you obviously can see the pollen tract there on the dendrobium orchid. So um, if you were making this orchid, let's say in a dark color, like I was using burgundy paste or red or some of the darker colors, what I would suggest you do there is you actually would put yellow paste into there first. So this is another mold I have just to sort of show you the concept. But what you'd actually do is you take um, these are number one size balls of paste. Okay, so you take actually number one size balls of paste and then you just roll those into a little tiny thin sausage. And then what you'd actually do there, have a little bit of obviously vegetable shortening into your mold and then you just lift this up, needle tool end, and you put these in to make the little, the little, and you can just gently press that in with the companion tool. All right, and so that would just go into your, and then you just, any extra paste there, you just would pull that out from there. And then you'd actually, what you then do is if you were doing burgundy or a color like that, you can then just press the, um, the burgundy paste on top of this. And what that means is when you take it out, you're going to have the pollen tract will be yellow, okay? Um, because if you try and dust yellow on top of burgundy, for example, it's not going to show. Now, when we do like pastel colors, like cream, white, pale pink, this pale green color, we can dust that yellow easily. So I'm going to actually not do this, but this just gives you options. Um, and I will also be showing you a similar technique on the Phalaenopsis or moth orchid, where you can actually make that in one color or you can actually make it in yellow. So I'm going to take the eight small and uh, so number eight, eight small. So through the hole and then we're going to take the, just going to rub a little bit of vegetable shortening into here 
and then we're going to just roll this into a sausage. Just roll that into like a little sausage shape there. And I'm going to just dust a little, little corn flour, cornstarch onto that. So if I've got the shortening in there, I would also use the cornstarch on there. And I'm just going to press this into the sort of the middle area here. And then I'm going to start to work this to the, to the edge. Okay, so you get that little bit of thickness here at the, where we need the support of the throat and then a little bit thinner here, the edge. Okay, so just gonna start to work this in to the mold. And then we're gonna get this, this will be for the throat part here. And just gonna bring this down. Just make sure that that sort of um, goes right the way to the edge of the throat. If you can see it looks a little bit thin, just work some paste from your central area here. So remember a little bit thicker here, which we want for the shape of the throat and stay within the perimeter of the mold. Okay. Then I'm going to take my fan vena. Now the fan vena I've used for several of the components on this um, mold. All right. So you'll see me use this several times. This is sold separately, all right, as I discussed in uh, lesson one, lesson two, and in the introduction. But um, we also, this comes as part of the um, Ultimate Sunflower Gerber Daisy and Daisy Mold, okay? So but we do sell this separately, it's called a fan veiner. And we're gonna use this for the veining on the back of the throat, okay? So it's gonna give you the veining on the back of your throat here, like so, okay? You could also use the peony back as well. You know, there are lots of different ones we can use. But as Flower Pro expands, the whole idea with this is obviously it's a, it's a system and uh, we will be sort of cross-referencing and using different things going forward for different parts. So now you're going to remove this from here and you can see how you have your pollen trap there. But because this is um, pale color, we can dust yellow on here. But you can imagine if this was in burgundy or red or a very dark purple, you're not going to be able to do that. So that's why you'd have, and then when you pop it out of the mold using this technique, these two yellow pieces would be there replacing the same color, okay? So then we're going to place it onto your um, pad here. So I'm going to place it onto my little foam pad. Now, the uh, very much like the dendrobium on the Oncidium. So this is almost like, as you can see, like a big version of the dendrobium shape, okay? Um, and the Oncidium. So those we just ruffled. So we're going to use the Dresden tool like I did there. And so on the hard firmer side of the pad, on this end part of the pedal, I'm going to just work the paste like this, all right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to the soft side, and I'm going to just sort of work from the outside to the inside. So this is like if you've watched my peonies, um, how I do the peony pedals. So you're actually just going to just sort of work the edge a little bit as well. So you're going to use Dresden tool from inside to outside, like I did on the Oncidium and Dendrobium. And then because this is a little bit larger, it's going to work from the outside to the inside on here as well. Okay. Now I'm going to put this onto my cosmetic sponge and using my Dresden tool. All right. With my Dresden tool here, I'm just going to just stroke two or three times on each side here and here like this. So what this is going to do, this is going to encourage those two side petals you see to curl around, okay? Now, just like I showed on the dendrobium, we're gonna take some egg white and we're going to brush some egg white about halfway down your pollen tract, all right? So this is your pollen tract here. So I'm gonna come about halfway down the length of that and a comparable amount each side, okay? So that is about, um, we're probably about half an inch, about um, 13, 12, 13 millimeters, okay? And then you take your dry dry center. So this is my dry center here. And then what we're gonna do there is gonna just take the dry center, you gain yellow part down. This is gonna go into position here. All right, and you're gonna just bring the paste around. So that part that you've got egg white on wants to actually come to meet. Doesn't want to overlap, it wants to come to meet like so. Okay, and then you can just open out your throat like this, but you see the shape of your classic throat. All right, now I'm going to use same concept as I did before. So this is my, if you haven't watched uh, the uh, video one, the part one, I just took a crepe foam former and cut this up. And what this does, it makes like individual, um, makes individual um, formers. So I'm just gonna put this in, into there like so. 
So you see this will actually just support the support this while it dries, you see? So you just actually would just support this while it dries. And then um, what you would do there is just put that on the, putting it on the corner. And then again, you can either take the, like your large um, former like this, just put that onto there to dry or like a cooling rack, you know, suspended on some books. So just something to actually sort of uh, dry that or in terms of you could put this into a cup um, and you can also like cover like a cup with a piece of foil and then you can just push, make a hole through the foil and then obviously the wire will be accommodated in there. But that's how you would dry the, um, you dry the throat. So then once your throat is dry, um, obviously when that comes out, you see your, your throat will be dry, it will come out like this and you get the shape. You can see the pollen tract, the two little lines in the center there, okay? So next we're going to be moving on to the uh, sepals and petals. So moving on to the petals and sepals, these are the outside parts and these will be individually wired, all right? Um, so as you can see on the mold, um, so on the mold here, uh, we're gonna be using these three parts here. Now what we actually need is the head and the two legs, which are the sepals. So we're actually gonna be making three of these straight ones. So there's three of those made for the head and the two legs. And uh, you can see here, that's like the head and the two legs, all right? And then the arms are slightly curved, okay? So with the arms, we will make one of the right-hand arms and one of the left-hand arms, okay? So that will give us the five components, all right? Um, now, when we do this, we're gonna be using number seven, small ball of paste. Remember, this could be a totally different color to the throat. So seven small, okay? So it's gonna go through the number seven hole. And of course, then you'd make another four balls of paste the same size, okay? Um, we're going to dry these in um, spoons, so we actually will dry these in spoons like this, you can see, all right, and these are actually yogurt spoons, they're used for like frozen yogurt, and uh, they're an elongated version of a teaspoon, a teaspoon is a little shallow, all right, a little, and it's a little short, so these are like just more like ice cream or yogurt spoons, and they are um, obviously a little bit longer, so they accommodate the shape of this very well, okay. So we're going to dry, so you need five spoons per orchid. All right, so we're going to take your paste, okay? And um, I'm going to put the wire in after I've done. You know, you'll notice how sometimes we put the wire in before, sometimes we put it afterwards. Generally for more basic shapes like this, I put the wire in afterwards. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to roll this into a little sausage here. So this is going to be made about two thirds of the height of the paste, all right? We're going to put a little bit of um, vegetable, fat shortening into the cavity, just a little tiny bit. And just remember, as I mentioned on the other videos, when you're doing this, when you finish your project, just wash this in warm soapy water, pop it in your food dehydrator to dry. Alternatively, you can also put these in a dishwasher as well. All of the KD Sue molds, not only are food safe, but they're also dishwasher safe as well. So you can put these, um, I'm just gonna press this in to the mold like this, all right? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start now to work to get this thinness on the edge and slightly thicker in the middle. So you see how you're just gonna work this down. All right, so once you get that into the mold, then we're going to establish a ridge. All right, so you generally, I just use my thumb and finger here, uh, my two fingers here like this just to establish this little ridge down the, so you're just gonna have a ridge about halfway down there. You can also do this with your companion tool as well. Generally on smaller things, I generally use the companion tool, we just roll each side of that, just to give you like a little um, slight ridge there. So we're gonna take a 28 gauge wire, all right, white wire, and going to insert the wire into here, and then we're gonna push this into the paste. All right, so you should sort of just feel this tickle your finger as it will goes goes into the into the paste here, like so. Okay, all right. And then once you get in here, you're going to take the back veiner. Now there's a couple of options here. You could use the fan veiner, um, but if you have the lily, the lily is a little bit more sort of uh, the right shape. All right. So this is the lily back veiner. So you can just take the lily back veiner here, just line this up, and just going to press gently. Don't press too hard on the back because we only want like a fairly subtle veining on the back, all right? And also this um, this particular, these sepals have got quite a sharp central vein. So if you press too hard, you'll split your paste, all right? So you're gonna take this out of the mold here, all right? 
And then you just kind of just pinch around the bottom here just to secure that. Okay, like this. And then this is the back of the one we obviously have the less vein in on. And then we're going to just soften your edge just very, very slightly. All right. Doesn't really have a lot of shape to it because uh, an orchid is uh, not too frilly, especially the Cymbidium family. And then you turn this over to the front side and I'm just going to use the shaft of the companion tool. Just going to hollow this around the base. All right. Now then you take your spoon. Okay. And then what we're going to do is you're going to just take the, turn the flap, the pedal over. So this is the back of the pedal. And I'm just going to use my finger and my, and I'm going to hold where the wire is. All right. And I'm just going to bend this just so slightly curve the wire. Okay. Because this is a 28 gauge wire. It's nice and short, um, soft. And then you're going to put this into, into this uh, spoon to dry. Okay. So that's sort of uh, like how you would make the first pedal. I'm just going to show you one of the side pedals so you'll sort of see the process again and show you the veining on those. Now on the side pedals, we would make obviously one left and one right hand side. So you use exactly the same. Remember, I've already got some vegetable fat into there. So we're going to take your, put a little bit of cornstarch on there, corn flour. Okay. I'm just going to press this in. And now I'm just going to work this to your edge. And so you make one of the right hand side and one of the left hand side because these will be like your two um, arms. Okay. When I teach um, orchids to my students, I always relate to it a bit like a figure. You know, you have your head. So if you think of this like this is your head, this is your legs, and these are your two arms. And so when we come on to assembly and things like that, you just think of this almost like as a sort of a a form of a figure and that sort of makes it easy to understand. So your, remember your head and your legs are your sepals and then your two arms are your pedals. Now when we put the wire into this one, we're actually going to go in at a lot like obviously you can see it actually is forced to go in at an angle because you put the egg white on the wire and you're going to just bring this down to the bottom here and just going to push the wire into your, so this will just go in at an angle there. All right. And then you're going to take the, and then when you do the, all you do here is you just follow that at an angle. Just going to follow that with an angle like that. Okay. And then you're just going to just turn this over. It's going to take that out. Again, just pinch that at the bottom and just very, very lightly soften. And I'm really, as I said, just minimal amount of softening because you don't really want to make it frilly. You just soften it a little bit. And then you're going to just hollow the base on the front side. And maybe you flip it upside down. And I'm just going to just bend that over the curve of my finger. When you do this, make sure your thumb masks the wire, because if you don't, the wire will pop out. Okay. So you're actually holding the end of the wire. You see then this one here will just go, you see, this would be like, for example, that would be that, that wing pedal there. You see, so that's coming because it's a little bit curved shape and then the other one goes the other shape. Okay. The other way. All right. So those are your components of your um, orchid. And then we're going to let those dry. And then uh, while they're drying, you can go ahead and make your buds, which I'll be showing you next. So for the buds of the Cymbidium, we, there are two sizes of buds on the mold. And these almost look a little bit like bird's beaks. And uh, these are the two sizes. So if you've watched lesson number one, which is a dendrobium, very similar concept. We're going to make one half of the bud and then we're going to let that dry. And then we're going to make the second half. This is the technique I use for dendrobiums also pine cones, poppy seed heads, and many other flowers. Now, um, it doesn't matter whether you use the right hand or the left hand side first, but then you need to make sure you use the opposite for the, the other side. Now we're going to use uh, 26 gauge wires here. All right. So these are 26. All right. So we're using, you know, 24 for the column. Then we use 28 for the petals and now 26. These are all white wires just because we're working in pale, the pale color. And I'm going to then just make again about a, a five millimeter hook on the end of those. All right. A little tiny bit more of an open hook because we want this to grasp into the paste. Okay. And then you use your um, mold here. Now we're going to be measuring off the paste. So this will be number six small for the small one and number seven small for the big one. Okay. So this will be number seven small for the larger one here. Okay. I'm going to show you the larger one. So I'm going to work here on the right hand side first. So again, just a little bit of vegetable shortening here. Just going to 
massage your paste a little bit. Remember, always condition your paste. I'm just going to put a little bit of corn flour onto this. But you know, some some um, like flour petal paste are a little softer than others, and you know, homemade paste you could make it a little bit softer. So, so what you do is just like the dendrobium. I'm just working this towards the point. Okay, so I'm just using leveling out, and I'm going to trim off my excess with my little mini scraper. So just with your little mini scraper, you can just use that to press this down. All right, so that's going to give you your so the paste will be level with the top. And remember, reasons like on my pinecone YouTube video, you know, the reason why I don't just use my thumb there is you'd end up with a hollow there. So obviously this makes sure it's flat. So we're going to take your egg white. I'm going to put a little bit of egg white onto here. And then again, I'm going to go in at a slight angle. So I'm going in at a slight angle to the, you know, to the mold like this. So I want to sort of push it in and then I push it under the surface and then push it in about two thirds of the way down and then just mold over the back of this. And you can just do that with your, like this, all right? And then you're just gonna flex your mold. You'll take your bud out like that. Now if your wire is visible, you can just uh, just pull it back and then just repress it or even just put it back in the mold. But uh, you don't want the wire obviously sticking out of that, okay? And uh, then what you would do is, so obviously you'd make the small ones as well in the same way, this remember is done um, this is done with your um, smaller size. It's done with your number six small size. This is a seven small. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then repeat the process. Okay, so we're then going to let these dry. Now, when you dry these, you need to let them dry so they're really ideally totally dry. I just put these in a food dehydrator for about two hours, or leave them three or four hours at room temperature uh, to dry. And then we're going to then repeat the process. So this is a side I used, and now now I'm going to use the other side, okay? Because we obviously need the opposite side, and that is why there's because on things like the rose cones, there's only one there's only one half of a mold as with the pine cones because it's symmetrical the other side. But because of the shape of these, we have a left and a right hand side. All right, so it's going to just make this in the same same sort of uh, way. Just going to work this down. So I generally just work this towards the point. All right, and then any extra paste there, you're just going to trim this off. Remember the little flexi scraper, I talked about this in lesson one, is basically just the, the same as like the little blue scraper I've used. And this is a new Flower Pro part of our new access, Flower Pro accessory line. Um, and uh, this is great to use for uh, obviously the same sort of process. And um, so then what we're going to do is going to take your um, bud here, all right? So with your bud, so, so you can use some egg white here. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of egg white. Just make sure you get that right the way to the edge, okay? And remember on some of the bigger like seed heads like the poppy and the uh, pine cones, I generally use piping gel or I use Super Bond, which is a little bit better for bigger things because it's a little bit stronger. But for these, the egg white. But now, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna put this on the top and see this this one I've made, um, so this is actually over 24 hours old, so it's nice and dry. So you can press nice and firmly there, you see? And you can flex your mold. And then when it comes out, you see how you're gonna get a perfect join, all right? You don't really get a seam here. Because if we made if we made them both at the same time and tried to put them together while they're soft, you're just going to distort them. So you see how you're going to get a perfect shaped bud here, like this, using this technique. All right, and um, and then you're just going to put that to dry. You know, just stand that up to dry. So we've um, we've made the components. So we've made the th column. We've made the throat. We've now made the sepals and petals. And now the buds. So next step is going to move on to assembly and then the fun part, which is the coloring. So now we're going to move on to the assembly. So first thing we're going to do is take some half width light green floral tape and we're going to assemble the or tape the base of the components first. So we're just going to start about two, two and a half centimeters down the wire, just slide it up to the bottom. Just going to come down about two and a half centimeters, about one inch and break off. So on the petals, we're just going to do that, just, you know, just a single amount here, like so, okay? And then when we do the throat, all right, we're going to basically just tape the throat, same way, just slide this up, and then we will just start assembling. So usually I do the throat last. 
So I'm going to take a um, pair of uh, tweezers here. Just because with tweezers, I can get a little bit closer than I can with pliers. These are just some sharp pointed tweezers. So now, so you're going to take your head. All right. So this is going to be like the head, which is one of the three that are the same. Okay. So head and legs are the same. And you see, these will be the two arms, which are the sepals. Okay. All right. So you're going to take your head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my throat and my head together first. Okay. So you're just going to place your, I'm just going to go around here with your tape just a couple of times so you secure the head first. So the head will be at 12 o'clock, okay? So thinking of the clock, we're using that at 12 o'clock. Now we're gonna take the two legs. Now the two legs, we're gonna be bending those down, same sort of way, almost at a right angle. All right, and then the legs, you can actually put these both in at the same time, the two legs. But don't try and do all three at the same time, okay? So you put your head in and tape it in. Now we're going to add the two legs. You see, I'm going to go around with my floral tape. Now, the reason why we taped each of the components, and I've talked about this on some of my other videos, by having the floral tape here, floral tape is a little sticky. So what it means is when we attach one to the other, these petals aren't going to move or spin around. If we just left the wires just as um, paper covered wires, they would spin around all over the place. So now we're going to put in the two arms and the arms generally just put these in individually. So we're going to put in one arm here. And the cymbidium has quite a thick stem. So we're actually, you know, sometimes when we do taping, we actually are cutting back. We're using skinnier tape like quarter width, but we actually want to build up this to make it a little bit thicker. And you're going to, it's going to go around. All right. And then once you've gone around here, you're going to just Make sure that they're sort of are in the right sort of position and then going to take down the wire. Just going to take down to the bottom of the wire here. All right, and then you're just going to just position your... Now the Cymbidium Orchid, your components touch each other, which means that the actual, um, the legs here are almost like doing like when I teach this, I relate to they almost like doing the splits. You see, some orchids like Cattleyas, for example, the two legs are almost like this position. But on the Cymbidium, you almost just sort of push them out so that they will. So it looks almost a bit like, as I said, he's doing the the splits. And you can, you know, open or close this up as you as you wish to. And then taking your pair of pliers, you would just with the pair of pliers just bend that forward, and that's going to give you the sort of the classic shape of your. Of your orchid here. All right, so that's going to be how we would do the cymbidium um, assembly. Okay, now when we do the buds, we're going to, because you can see the stem of the flower is now quite thick, which is actually natural looking, these are quite skinny. All right, so what we're going to do when we do the buds is we actually will start the floral tape, we will slide it up to the bottom, and then I'm going to come down about five centimeters, and I'm going to go up two and down three. So I'm actually going to build up the floral tape. So the floral tape will then look like the stem, you see. Now you can, um, if you wish to, you can use like a pair of scissors and you can just smooth that. Um, so certain flowers where you have more of a sort of a really smooth stem, but the actual sort of the, the orchid has a little bit of a textural stem. So I just usually leave it like that. But anyway, so you tape it, you slide it up, gonna come down. So about, you know, this is a half length wire. So about sort of about half the length of the wire. And you're gonna go up the second time and then you're gonna come down the third time. All right, now when we use cymbidiums on a cake, you can of course just use the flower just like this. Um, cymbidium is actually the most popular orchid for Mother's Day, both here in the United Kingdom, UK, Europe and also in America. So cymbidium is used a lot for orchid corsages. So usually a single orchid would be given for Mother's Day. Um, this is popular for weddings, um, for groomsmen, um, you know, grooms to wear for boutonnieres. Um, and as I said, so of course, then you're just using just the flower. 
Um, in the orchids I'm showing on each of these videos, I'm doing them really how they grow. So I'm doing them more in what we call the spike, all right? So when you grow Cymbidium orchids, so if, for example, you have an orchid plant at home, a Cymbidium orchid, this is sort of how it grows on the spike, okay? But uh, as I said, for especially for not so much for craft, but for cake, a lot of times I would just use the Cymbidium orchids on their own. A lot of times maybe not even put in buds with them. And I would use maybe like three Cymbidiums and some roses and sweet peas or whatever in an arrangement. But uh, when you are doing them in a natural um, arrangement like this, so what we do is you have your bud here. So you're just gonna just bend the bud like this and then the next one will go, just be attached like this. So the actual sort of curve, the, the little beaks are coming in towards the center. And then this would be like the start. This would be the first, first part of it. And then I'm taking here a 20 gauge wire and I would just take the 20 gauge wire because in my classes and here on my Flower Pro videos, I like to show sort of how the flowers grow naturally. And you'll notice something that I haven't got any leaves on these because generally when a floral designer, a florist uses orchids, they're never going to use the actual foliage of the orchid. Those of you that have orchids growing at home, like a moth orchid, a phalaenopsis, you know, the leaves are long oval shaped leaves, not very attractive. Also like cymbidium, the leaves are you know, very long. I mean, they basically can be up to about a meter in length or about three feet. So the thing is, you're not going to have a, like on a little small six inch cake, one cymbidium orchid in a two or three foot leaf. You know, it's going to be a proportion wise out of proportion. So generally when um, floral, is, you know, like a florist, a floral designer uses these, for example, for a corsage, they would maybe use like, for example, ferns. So that's where you could use my um, um, fern mold from Flower Pro. You could obviously add other types of leaves as well, including things like eucalyptus from my wedding foliage mold. You could add some of the beautiful um, other uh, foliages from that. You could use boxwood. So there are lots of other options there, or ivy from my obviously maple um, and ginkgo and ivy leaf mold. You could do ivy. Um, so it's not natural to use the leaves of the actual orchid in, in a cake or in an arrangement, usually. Okay. Um, Anyway, so, so once you get the, um, the here, we're going to just tape down just a little ways. And of course, you can see on this one, I've got five buds, all right? So I've got, got obviously three small and then two large buds, okay? Just showing you here too, just so you can get an idea. And then your orchid would just be attached like this. This will be attached to the stem here. And then Usually what I do is I take two more 22 gauge wires. So when you put in the, when you start putting in the orchids, I'm just going to add two more 22 gauge wires just to sort of like to level this out so that you have a nice round stem. And you're just going to just take down the wire like this. And then when you get down to the bottom here, you can just finish this off. And of course, the, depending on how you're going to use the orchids would depend on what length wire you would put on them as well. You know, like what, what sort of length wire this is going to be. But here you can see you have your orchid um, with your, um, obviously, with the finished ones. So next step I'm going to show you is how I do the coloring on the orchid. So now we're going to move on to the fun part, which is the coloring. Now, on the cymbidium, remember with the throat, you either are going to use the option as I have where I've just done it all in green or put in the yellow paste in and then the burgundy or whatever. So of course you wouldn't have to do this step if you've already got yellow paste on those two little lines. But we're gonna take some, uh, this is a daffodil yellow, so just a sort of a lemon yellow color. And I'm just gonna go into the throat there and um, this is gonna just be brushed onto those two lines. You just sort of rub, you just brush in one direction. So you're just gonna put just a little bit of yellow into those on those lines. You're just gonna get a little bit of yellow into there. It's just, it's quite subtle, okay? Um, <clears throat> then I'm going to use um, a light apple green. So this is a color I used actually on um, the dendrobium, for the green on the dendrobium. So I'm gonna take some of the light apple green. And then here I'm going to, and I've already have done this on, um, but you're basically just gonna dust this all over. So if you think about like cosmetics, this would be like almost your foundation, okay? So you're just gonna just brush all over just going to brush this all over the 
and then on the throat you'll brush that on the back and you're going to brush that just onto the edge. So you're actually going to leave the middle part of the paler green. Okay, so you're just going to brush this around the, the throat here. I'm just going to brush a little bit of that onto the column as well. So I'm really just leaving that middle area of the throat undusted. And then you obviously will also do this on the back of the petals. Now, just like I talked about on um, the uh, lesson number two, and lesson number one, if you feel more comfortable uh, dusting all of the petals individually and then putting it together or putting the orchid together and the buds and then dusting them um, or assembling them and coloring them, it's whatever your comfort zone is, all right? There's nothing wrong with coloring them individually and then putting them together. A lot of times I just find in classes, most of my classes, I typically do what I'm showing really in my videos because uh, the student then can come up to the table and they can dust everything at one time and just hold one stem. So you're going to put this, you're going to do this base color. So this base color goes sort of like all, all over there. So that's going to give you that brighter green. Okay. Then we're going to take um, a lime green. So this is just a sort of a brighter lime green color. And I'm going to use some of this limey green color. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to brush down. So I'm going to just brush down the center of the, the center of the petals here with this lime green. It's got a little bit of dust in there. All right. And so you're just going to get this sort of like darker green stripe down the middle here. So you're going to brush in one direction from the bottom of the petal to the top. And then you're also going to do that on the back as well. So you're going to have this sort of slightly darker green coming down the so you're really emphasizing the vein in and the central vein on here as well. And I will also do that on the buds. So on the buds there, we're going to brush around the bottom of the bud. So you're going to actually brush around the bottom area of the bud and then you're actually going to brush up into the where the the lines are. So you actually bring in the green up, you see from the bottom here. So you're going to get this nice shading on the buds. Okay. So it's going to come around the bottom here. And then <clears throat> going to just going to just come up the All right, so you're gonna get this nice, this nice coloring and shading onto the buds. And then on the, the throat here, we will also, with the darker green, I'm gonna just go around the throat, just the very, very edge of the throat there, just to sort of just emphasize that frilling. I will also just dust that darker green onto the column as well, okay? So I'm just using those colors onto there. So that is all the, the base coloring um, that we have there. And then we're going to then take your, going to do some painting. Now I'm going to use sort of a, like a claret, um, burgundy wine color, just sort of like maroon, you know, just sort of something along those, that sort of color. Uh, this is a burgundy. I'm going to take some of this, I'm going to put some of that into a little artist palette. I'm going to use a little bit of vodka here. So a little bit of vodka is added to the, just to make this a little paintable consistency. Because now you can get also paints as well, like food art paints that you could use, you know, so those are ready to use out of the pot. Now I'm going to use a um, brush here. So these are just some fine, um, fine brushes. This is a company called Sugar Press and they have a, this is a nice, like a fine brush. And then I'm going to actually use these really, this is a, a little spotter brush. So this is going to be used for small dots and this is a liner brush so that's used for long lines. All right. So these type of brushes are used a lot for like China painting and obviously painting fine things on here. Now alternatively, if you don't have really fine brushes, what I would suggest you do is use a regular brush and then probably use like a food art pen. This is a burgundy colored pen. You could use the fine end of that if you don't have a real, real fine liner brush, okay? 
So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to use my, just open this up, all right, and I'm going to use my brush here, and I'm going to use my brush, and I'm almost going to go back and forward with the brush like this. So I'm going to build up these lines, so just take a little bit of color at a time. So I'm just going to just build up the, so you see how I'm actually building up the little lines on the orchid like this. Okay, so you can just do that in single lines or just go back and forward. You just want to just look at it to see it's like fairly symmetrical. All right, so you're going to build this onto the, onto the edge of your orchid. Like that. Okay. So that's going to be just done with the bigger brush. Okay. Then I'm going to take this really, really fine brush. You can see it's literally got like just a few hairs on it. And I can use this brush to see paint like little lines onto there. So you can do like the like central line and then you can build. You can just do some little lines coming from out from that. Okay. And these brushes also have, when you um, have finished with them, when you wash them, wash them really, really carefully. All right. Never do that with the brush. You want to just rotate the brush. And then you put the cap on and the cap has got a little hole in the end of it. So then it will just dry naturally. So you have to be careful to protect the ends of the, the little brushes. And then this little brush here, this has got, but this is very, very short. So this is what we call a spotter brush. Okay. So a spotter brush is actually made, as it says, for doing little spots. So you use that to make just like little tiny, little tiny dots or little tiny spots. You're going to do the little tiny spots here. You're also going to do the little tiny spots here on the other side. And so this could be used as an alternative. And I'm also going to put a few little spots on the yellow as well. So you're going to do some little tiny spots on the yellow here as well. So you have a little bit of spotting on the yellow. But as I, um, when I did the Oncidium, I used the fine end of the pen here. So again, you know, if you didn't have, you could just use a fine food art pen and you could just do the little dots with this. It's also what you feel more comfortable with as well. Okay. Some people um, would, you know, feel more comfortable with a pen and a paintbrush. Okay. So you could actually do all of this with the pen because you can also use, for example, the pen. You can take the pen like this and then you can actually do the lines. The lines like we have here and then you could use the fine pen and the fine pen so that is possible to do with a pen or with a brush okay i wanted to just show you obviously in my classes i like to show my students different skills so just showing you some painting technique as well all right and once you get that um once you get that finished uh, once you get the orchid finished then again we will just steam this this will just sort of set the color and uh, we'll give your orchid a nice natural look here so remember, I'm using a closed steamer, which I talk about in a lot of my videos, you know, and this is just a small closed steamer, but you can also use a tea kettle or a saucepan of water, but it's going to be more severe. So just uh, don't let it uh, get too, you don't want to make the paste sticky. And then we're just going to just going to just gently steam this. So we're just going to just steam the orchid and steam the back of it. So here you have your Cymbidiums, all right, so we've got the Cymbidium orchids here. So it's a beautiful orchid and you can see here you've got obviously the um, two sprays there uh, with three Cymbidiums. So, you know, on the wedding cake, it means you could have sort of like them could be separated with obviously roses or other flowers or obviously you'd use just on their own. So you could have a long spike of say three orchids coming out from the top of the cake um, and uh, looks very, very attractive. And uh, so that is your Cymbidium orchid. Um, and uh, so hope you've enjoyed this lesson, uh, making Cymbidium orchids. In the next lesson, I'm going to be showing you the fourth of the orchids from the, um, the ultimate orchid mold. And that's going to be the, uh, the Vanda orchid. Uh, Vanda orchid is a nice tropical orchid. So I'll see you in that next lesson. Bye-bye.